would like to call to order the May 21st, 2018 regular meeting of the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners. Welcome. It's good to have so many people in the house tonight. We are very happy to have with us tonight for the presentation of colors, Girl Scout Troop 2377 from Center United Methodist Church. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Color Guard dismissed. Thank you very much for that presentation of colors. <clears throat> and after our invocation, we'll ask you to come back to the microphone and introduce yourselves, and we'll have a county pen for you. We're happy to have with us the Reverend Sheldon Davis from Oak Grove Missionary Baptist Church for our invocation tonight. And we're going to behave better in here than we did on the elevator. So. <laughs> We rode up together. <laughs> no problem. Good evening. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for a yet another great day that you have blessed us with. We thank you for your mercy and your grace, and we pray that your blessing be upon this commission, this meeting on tonight. Look upon every heart that is represented here. Let peace reign throughout these walls. We pray that peace will be forever in Carras County. Thank you for who you are, for all you're doing. Bless us all now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. We appreciate you being with us tonight, Reverend Davis. <clears throat> now, if I were Girl Scout Troop 2377 would come forward to the microphone and introduce yourselves and tell us something that you enjoy about scouting. And then if you'll exit to my right, your left, Commissioner Honeycutt will have a pen for you. And feel free to pull that microphone down if you'd like so. My name is Haley Badger. I am 11 years old. I go to A.T. Allen Elementary School and I'm in the fifth grade. One thing I enjoy about Girl Scouts is getting to see my friends every other Friday night and getting to spend time and doing lots of fun badges with them. Okay. Thank you. My name is Jamie. I'm in eighth grade and I go to Concord Middle School. Um, one thing I enjoy about Scouts is being able to see all kinds of different girls and all the different kinds of diversity. Thank you. Hi, my name is Malia Coleman. I go to WM Irvin. I am 10 years old. And one thing I enjoy about Girl Scouts is seeing my friends and helping people. Thank you. I am Zizai Briggs. I am 10 years old. I go to WM Irvin. And the reason why I love Girl Scouts is because I get to hang out with my friends. Thank you. My name is Addison Campbell, and I, um... <laughs> yeah, it's a... My name is Addison Campbell, and I go to Pitt School Road at Shermanley, and I'm in first grade. One thing I enjoy about Girl Scouts is playing with the Scouts. Thank you. <laughs> Can you tell them your name? It's okay. It's okay. Okay. What's your name? Kylie. Kylie Charlton. Can you say that again? Kylie Charlton. This is Kathy Charlton. And what do you like to do with Steve? Uh, I like <clears throat> to have fun and um, be with other scouts. She likes to be with her other scouts and have fun with them. Hey. Hey. 
Thank you. We appreciate you being here. <clears throat> Thank you all very much. We appreciate you being here tonight. Uh, next is approval or a correction of the minutes, and you all have copies of those before you. Uh, so do I hear a motion uh, that we correct or amend the minutes as presented? I'll make a motion to approve as presented. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Next is the approval of the agenda, and you all have that before you as well. Do I hear a motion that we approve the agenda as presented? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move to recognitions and presentations. We're happy to have with us tonight Tracy LeCompte from the Cooperative Extension uh, for our Youth Commission end of year recognitions. Welcome. Thank you, commissioners and county staff members. Thank you all for being here tonight. We are super excited to be here and recognize our youth commissioners for this year. Our 2017-2018 our youth commissioners are here with me tonight to celebrate the end of the year of their banquet. Um, I am the 4-H agent for Cabarrus County. 4-H uh, is the county's youth development program for, ages, uh, for youth ages 5 to 18. Uh, for 2017, we are proud to have reached over 11,000 youth here in Cabarrus County. One of the groups that I work with directly is the Cabarrus County Youth Commission. Thank you all to all of our commissioners for working with us this year. Um, the kids have done a great job of getting to know you guys, and you guys have done a great job of working with them, introducing them to all the things that we do here in the county. So thank you for being part of that. Um, at this time, I'll actually turn it over to our president, Newport Parikh, for her end of the year summary. Thank you so much, Ms. LeCompte, for the introduction. Good evening, commissioners, the present guests, and the viewers. I would first like to thank the commissioners for the opportunity that was offered to us and to help us learn about the different ways we as students can make a difference in our community. I would also like to thank Mrs. LeCompte um, for, her helping, for helping the commission to be successful in all we do. It has truly been an honor to work with her. This year, we have had one of the most productive years as a youth commission. We were able to achieve so much. During the school year, we had an, uh, an incredible opportunity to visit many county facilities, such as the library, the senior center, Camp TN Spencer, the emergency service department. During these trips, we went, met with many knowledgeable people. These visits have opened up our eyes to many different resources that Cabarrus County has to offer to citizens of all ages in our county. Youth Commission this year also had the opportunity to work with the Smithsonian Museum and the Mount Pleasant Historical Society on a project called The Way We Worked. The Youth Commissioners created Yes Stories and presented them, them on the day of the event. The Commission was also given a huge opportunity through the County Manager and the Board of Commissioners to be able to sit with you guys once a month. As a result, we have been able to understand the way the Commissioner meetings are run and learn about the different items on the agenda. And thus, we are extremely thankful for this opportunity. Lastly, I would like to thank the Youth Commission for their dedication and commitment and their continuous hard work throughout the year. It has been a huge honor to be this year's Cabarrus County Youth Commission. And one last thing, I would also like to thank the Youth Commissioners again because they have worked so hard to be able to communicate with you guys and we we're very happy with the connection that we have built in the relationship. Um, now at this time, I would like to invite our seniors to come forward and introduce themselves and share their future goals and plans with you guys. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Hi, my name is Lauren Merton. I'm currently a senior at Hickory Ridge High School. In the fall, I plan to uh, attend the University of North Carolina at Charlotte as a lean scholar. 
Hi, my name is Devin Mullins. I go to Concord High School. I'm a senior there. I'm going to Appalachian State in the fall, majoring in political science and regional economic development. Thank you. Great. Thank you. I am also a senior this year from Cabarrus Cannabis Early College High School. Uh, my goals are to go to um, Chapel Hill for the fall um, and major in biology. Um, I would also like to have all the youth commissioners to be recognized. May all the youth commissioners be standing, please. Thank you, you guys may be seated. Um, I would also um, like to be, have the entire Youth Commission be excused for our annual banquet. Thank you. Okay. And so are the rest of us uh, invited to go with you? <laughs> if you guys wish to come, you guys can. <laughs> Thank you very much. We appreciate uh, what you guys have done over the past year, and we're glad that it's been a good experience. We have enjoyed having one of you up here in the seat that's empty tonight, um, and we hope that that's been beneficial to you. And we are looking forward to the day when, <clears throat> from your group, there will be elected county commissioners sitting up here with us. So best wishes so to all of you. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. And you are excused to your banquet, even if we're not invited. <clears throat> okay, next on our agenda from planning and development, uh, Tammy Rimsberg from Cabarrus Soil and Water Conservation for district contest recognitions. Welcome. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners and guests. Every year, Cabarrus Soil and Water Conservation District offers a contest for students in public and private schools across the county. This contest involves the student learning about a conservation topic and then presenting it um, in an informative way through essays, public speaking, computer slideshows, and posters. This year, we had over 900 students participate in the contest in Cabarrus County. Out of this, 21 winners were chosen as the best in the county. We would like to thank our teachers and judges for whittling that number down um, and making a very hard decision. Um, four of those 21 students also won in our area eight of soil and water conservation districts, which means they were the best in 12 counties in the state. Um, and two of our students went on to compete in the state competition, and we are very proud of um, all they did. I would like to call the students up to tell you one thing that they learned or enjoyed while participating in the contest this year before they meet you. Um, and I need to see, did Fernanda make it in? Okay, I don't think she got here. Um, so I'd like to start with Hunter Boss from C.C. Griffin, and he won our sixth grade essay. He was in third place. Hunter? Hi. Um, I really enjoyed learning about, um, what was I going to say? Um, the water cycle and how it affects our community and our lives through, yeah. <laughs> okay. Would you like for them to come up after they speak? Or? Um, we're, you're in charge. <laughs> so we'll, we'll go with whatever you've got planned. Okay. <laughs> go say hello to them <laughs> when you're finished. All right. Um, the next student I'd like to call up is Will McDermott from Cannon School, and he won first place in our fifth grade poster contest. Hi. Hi, I'm Will McDermott, and I really enjoyed, I, I learned how um, every small impact, every small action in, uh, affects a huge impact on our, our daily lives. Great, thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Will. Samara Pierman from Northwest Cabarrus Middle. He was our sixth grade computer slideshow first place winner, and he also won first place in area eight. I learned how important uh, water and soil conservation is, and with the help of my teachers and my uh, parents, I guess. Okay. 
All right, and Avrayan Syed from Cannon School was our third place sixth grade computer slideshow winner. Hello, I'm Rayan Sayed. I'm in sixth grade from Cannon School. First of all, I'd like to thank Cannon School, Cabarrus Soil and Water Conservation District, and Cabarrus County, and the commissioners for giving me this opportunity to participate in this program today. Before I started creating this presentation, I didn't know much about water conservation and its importance. I remember researching and later found out that we only have a small percentage of fresh water left on the earth, and the rest is all polluted, unfortunately. After reading this, I decided to be more cognizant about what I do with water and hopefully through my presentation that I created for the contest, I can make people aware and realize how important it is to conserve our key to life, water. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next um, student is Connor Smith from Northwest Cabarrus Middle. He was our first place winner for sixth grade essay. Hi, I'm Connor Smith, and one thing I learned from this is that you can survive up to three weeks without food, but only three days without water. Thank you. Then Anthony Stevenson from Mount Pleasant Middle School. He was our first place public speaking seventh grader. He also won first place in area eight and represented us um, at the state level. I would like to thank you all for this opportunity and how much it has helped me in learning how to learning how to become a better public speaker and how it's helped me learn more about water and so, water and soil conservation. It's also helped me understand what a competition in regionals, county and state are like and I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you. And in order for these students to participate in this contest, of course, we had to, the cooperation of teachers and administrators. There are a couple in the audience. I would like for them to stand so we can recognize them for allowing their students to participate. And we thank the commissioners for supporting us. Thank you very much. We appreciate you being here tonight, and thank you all for the great job. Uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure to, to hear what this has meant, meant to you folks, so keep up the good work. Uh, next, we have from Communications and Outreach, Active Living in Parks, uh, Jill Goodwin for, Julie, excuse me, Julie Goodwin for some presentations of awards. That's all right, that's my, it's J-U-L-L-I, okay. <laughs> I understand. Um, I'm with iTech Graphics and I'm one of the owners and I wanted to thank you guys first because we used to be in Charlotte and with your help we moved here in Concord and it, I'm very very happy with the move. Um, it's probably one of the best things we've done in our, in our nine years of business. So thank you for that. And we've been working and doing some printing with um, your, you guys and this is an award that um, was presented that we had um, taken and hoped that we were going to get some, you know, business from you guys, but we ended up even been doing better. It's the best of the category. Wow. That means a lot for our business because um, we came up and we, you know, worked hard and came up with a great idea. And I, I'm excited about it, and I'm hoping that we'll do a lot more for you guys because this also spreads the word of, you know, Cabarrus County. So um, this is for the active um, living in parks, and I just want to present it, and hopefully I'll be giving you a lot more awards. Thank you, I really appreciate it. And this was the um, log that we had cut with the image of Rob Wallace Dedication Day mm -hmm. from the cedar wood log cutting that we did on, on the grand opening. Great. So there's a lot more that we can do for you guys and I appreciate it, thank well, you. Well, thank you so much. And thank you for those comments. Uh, there are probably some of you that may be listening at home that might remember um, a number of months ago uh, we have these public hearings about new companies coming into the county and ways that we try to work with them to encourage them to come here, and iTech Graphics was one of those companies. So it's nice to see that go full, full circle. 
uh, and the fact that we're able to do business with you as a county and, and also the complimentary things that you said about the move. So thank you very much. We appreciate that. And congratulations to Parks and Active Living for the award and also our guys from communications that helped cause that to happen. So good job by everybody. Next we have from communications and outreach, uh, Cabarrus County Awards for Excellence in Communications. And I'm just the announcer in this case. Um, and you're not David Baxter or Jonathan Marshall who is on my agenda. <clears throat> our while our communications staff is wheeling in this, this um, treasure trove of awards, let me introduce this. So our, we, Cabarrus County has been recognized for our excellence in communication efforts. Um, this is the awards given to the county at the 2018 conference of the North Carolina City and County Communicators, NC3C. The conference was held in New Bern this year. The county received awards in a number of areas, and I think this is one of the most important parts. These are awards that recognize our online presence, our television and YouTube presence, print media, live events, and all forms of social media. So as I run through this list, you'll, you'll get a good idea of that. I'm also afterward, I'd like to have Debbie Brannon introduce the ITS staff who's with her tonight, because as you look at our website, and you've all seen our website and the great changes that were made there, and that's one of the areas in which we've been recognized for communication, this is your opportunity to meet all the people who are behind that, who don't often get to come up here before you. So the awards were for first place, um, Cabarrus County, the collaboration on the website redesign between communications and the staff at our information technology services. Best public education and government streaming channel for the Cabco TV streaming promo. Best interviewer talk show. This is for an out and about episode with Commissioner Lynn Shu. So he's also an award winner tonight. Um, that was the show he did with NCDOT, sitting perilously close to the construction project. Um, best magazine for Journeys, and again, that, that's a collaboration with our Alps department primarily. Best use of social media special event, the trout stocking at Franklis Park, which was, I'm not going to get this right, live stream, it was live streaming, Facebook Live. I actually went out there live and watched it. That was a pretty fantastic thing. And again, something that's done in one of our parks. Second place, live or live to video re recorded event, the 2017 Harrisburg 4th of July Parade. TV or video, one time special programming, which was a program filling the void. At 60, man finds birth father through genealogical research. And finally, best videography for storylines. So I'll invite our communication staff to introduce themselves and see if they have any comments and also ask Ms. Brandon to come forward and introduce her staff. And you all have to stand and come up here. <laughs> come on. Hello, Kasha Thompson, Communications and Outreach Manager. And I just wanted to share, one of the treasures we have here in Cabarrus County is a very diverse crew of talents. And I think what you see is um, how that manifests into not just the award winning content, but really content that changes the lives of the residents in Cabarrus County. And we make a very strong effort to be transparent and to explain information in a way that's digestible to folks because our goal is to communicate what you are doing and what our departments are doing to make the quality of life better in Cabarrus County. So it's, it's an honor to see that uh, celebrated throughout the state. Good evening, Kristen Button. I just wanted to thank you guys for trusting us to be a little creative with, with our government, social media especially, because I enjoy doing that. I'm Jonathan Weaver, multimedia journalist. I wanted to thank you all for all your support. I'm Jarrett Glass. I'm the producer, editor. I do a little directing, lighting. Thanks for letting me work with you guys. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Hi, I'm David Baxter, and welcome to Cabarrus This Week. No, I'm sorry, I just had to do that. Um, no, thank you very much for all your support, because of all we've been able to do is all because of your support, and uh, it is greatly appreciated. We hear that constantly throughout the county. 
where people are saying that they know more about what's going on in this county than any other county they've ever lived in. And just thank you very much for allowing us to, to tell people about all the wonderful things that uh, we have here in Cabarrus County. Great, thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Debbie Brannon, CIO. Um, as you may recall, um, I introduced you all to the new uh, website vendor back in March of 2017. And at that time, we uh, established a pretty aggressive timeline for getting the website redesigned. And that was working in parallel with the county's new brand. Um, it was important that the new website be ready to go when the new brand was introduced. And this team of people here, the IT Business Systems and Data Services team, um, worked hard with communications and outreach, other uh, county departments, and our vendor to successfully achieve those redesigned goals. And we went live at the same time as the brand was introduced in October of 2017. So I'm very excited that we're being recognized um, by the NC3C for this uh, for the website, and I'm extremely proud of my team. And I won't ask them to speak because. You know, we're technology people, we're not public speakers. Uh, these are the public speakers over here, but I will introduce you to um, uh, Mickey Farmer, who's the supervisor of the team. Uh, we have Mark McIntyre, who's responsible for all of our great analytics. Um, we have Joe Battinelli, who's responsible for all of our GIS and the great mapping we have online. We have Marcy Jones, who is our website programmer, and we have Marie Spain, who is our business systems analyst. So thank you for the opportunity to um, meet that aggressive deadline, and we continue to take suggestions for improvement and encourage people to give us feedback so we can improve it and make it even better. Thank you. Thank you, and we appreciate all the hard work that all of you have done. Um, these, both, both of these two teams are the ones that I refer to as the wizards. Because when, when I pick up this little microphone and I'm talking to somebody, that's, that's who we're talking to, and they just make everything magically happen correctly on both ends. So thank you very much. I just wonder if anybody else had the opportunity to win any awards because it looked like you brought them all home. Uh, yeah, so. did a great job as well. Cool. Well, we are, we are very proud, and, and thank you so much. The, the, only, the, the only concern that I have with it that I had voiced earlier to, to David was I, I was jealous that, that Commissioner Shue's episode <laughs> won in, instead of mine. So <laughs> good work. <laughs> yeah. So thank you very much. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> okay, next item on our agenda is Memorial Day uh, 2018 proclamation. And I will read that proclamation at this time. Whereas our ancestors shaped the structure of our political system, laid the groundwork for higher discoveries in science and medical research, started long-lasting traditions that enrich our heritage, and fought in war so that future generations would have freedom. And whereas it is important to cherish the memory of our friends and family members who have died, and to remember their contributions towards making our lives better, and whereas the veterans who fought and died for our country help preserve the freedoms and rights guaranteed to all people under the U.S. Constitution, and whereas on Memorial Day, Americans remember the enormous debt of gratitude we owe to our veterans who have lost their lives in defense, in the defense of freedom and the pursuit of peace, and we reflect on the past and renew our patriotism so that we may continue to live in freedom and seek peace so that our veterans will not have died in vain. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that Cabarrus, the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners do hereby recognize May 28, 2018, as Memorial Day 2018 in Cabarrus County and urges all residents in the county to take time on this special day of remembrance to honor those who have sacrificed and died to improve our quality of life and strengthen our nation. And so do I hear a motion to adopt this proclamation at this time? I'll make a motion. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion 
passes. And I think there will be a number of <clears throat> recognitions around the county. I know that the annual Memorial Day celebration in Kannapolis is at Veterans Park, right downtown Kannapolis. And I feel like there are probably some others, so we encourage everybody to participate uh, in one of those events on Memorial Day. Next item up is uh, Cabarrus County Emergency Medical Services Week Proclamation, and we are happy to have Jimmy Lentz with us for that presentation. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, we are here to present the proclamation for EMS Week. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service, and whereas the members of emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness or injury. And whereas emergency medical service team consists of emergency physicians, emergency nurses, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, firefighters, educators, administrators, and others. And whereas the members of the emergency medical services team, <clears throat> whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training and continuing education to enhance, enhance their life-saving skills. And whereas Americans benefit daily from the knowledge and skills of these highly trained individuals. And whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and the accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designating emergency medical services week. And now, therefore, it be resolved that you, the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 20th through May 26th, 2018, as Cabarrus County Emergency Medical Services Week. Great. Thank you. Do I hear a motion that we adopt this proclamation as presented? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Uh -huh. All opposed, no. That motion passes, and we thank you for that and what you do every day. And we move now to informal public comments. Uh, we have two cards that have been turned in. Uh, we, uh, we, you have three minutes to speak. We ask you to come to the microphone and state your name and address. And first up is Julie Stevenson. Good evening, commissioners and audience members. My name is Julie Stevenson, and I live at 5015 Clubview Drive in Concord. And I am a middle school teacher at Mount Pleasant Middle School. I'm the school librarian, so I'm speaking personally, and I want to directly speak to, in regards to the Mount Pleasant Public Library's space. It, it has come to your attention that we are looking for more space. And I personally want to talk about the youth section of the library. The section that is dedicated to the youth at the Mount Pleasant Library is physically one wall of books. And the size is not indicative of our patron demand, but it's limited merely by spatial limits. If there were more space, it would have a better collection, I'm sure, of that. Not to mention anything not to mention, but anything in that back room where the youth collection is housed is respectfully off limits during any scheduled programming. So every time there's a scheduled program, the kids are polite and respectful and they don't go in that room if the doors are shut. Um, the back room where the youth collection is housed is used for multiple different purposes, including tutoring, programming, they have story time with toddlers in there. There are book clubs, homeschool groups meet there, and monthly meetings. Um, I'd just like for uh, um, you and our community to keep the Mount Pleasant Public Library expansion on your agenda. And as an advocate for lifelong readers, I would love to see our county show the youth that reading, programming, and a safe space is a top priority. So thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Marsha Morris.
Good evening. I'm here for your monthly update from the Mount Pleasant Friends of the Library. Uh, we want you to know that we are now at 77% of our fundraising goal. Uh, that's for a, um, from a campaign that we started just three months ago. So uh, we know that's because we have tremendous support from both individuals and businesses in our community who all know that our current library is too small to meet the needs of Mount Pleasant. Uh, summer reading is coming soon and we are going to be bursting at the seams. The Mount Pleasant Friends of the Library are ready to work with you to get the library space that we need in Mount Pleasant. We're ready now and uh, we're close to reach reaching our goal, our fundraising goal Mount Pleasant is ready. We've seen that support from the community, and we do appreciate your support. So thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, those are all the public comment cards that I have tonight. So now we will move to our consent agenda. These are all items that are before you that we have discussed previously at our work session two weeks ago. Do I hear a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move now to new business. <laughs> <clears throat> First item on new business is from Cabarrus County Schools, and that is a reallocation request for the Perform Performance Learning Center. And we're happy to have Kelly Klutz and Tim Lauder with us. Thank you very much for having us here this evening. Uh, I know we discussed this in our work session here. Uh, we wish to reallocate some of the funds we had set aside for engineering into a the construction account uh, for the... So it was from the architect account um, into furniture and equipment and also a small amount into the construction account. We're not asking for additional funds. We're just asking to use them in a different line item in a different way. Okay. Are there questions for Ms. Klutz or Mr. Louder? And of course, we did talk about this two weeks ago as well um, in some detail. Okay, commissioners, what would be your pleasure on this item? Chairman, I'll move to uh, approve the reallocation of the Performance Learning Center funds and the associated budget amendment. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. <coughs> Our next item is request for West Cabarrus High School contingency funds. <coughs> uh, same speakers. <laughs> yes, uh, this request is, uh, as you said, for West Cabarrus High School, we're asking to use $860,000 of contingency funds um, due to some unsuitable soil conditions that we're encountering. And Mr. Louder can um, share more of the details if, you, if you'd like. Yes, you know, we started out with pretty heavy con uh, contingency on this item, knowing that we would probably have some issues with soils and, of course, wet weather. And this year we did encounter those, but we now have the west side of the site up and running and the full uh, building pad complete and all the parking lots complete. So that really has eliminated our, you know, opportunities to have to worry about it too much more in the future. So we look forward to being able to pay this portion of it out and, and move on. So where, where does that leave us with the balance of contingency after this? There's transfer. almost 200, about $200,000 left Still in the contingency in that. account, yes, which makes us a little concerned. Right. Um, but we, like Mr. Louder said, we're in a good place right now. We feel okay about it. Okay. Building is up and out of the ground, so that's, that's always your getting it up and out of the ground. Really. Right. So. Okay, are there other questions for Ms. Klutz or Mr. Louder? <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I did have a question earlier, but I think that you've answered it. Uh, Kelly, you said there's about 200000 left in the contingency for the whole project is that correct yeah from the plan from the initial initial yeah. plan mm -hmm. okay and um, I don't think you want to add anything to that Pam or do you do you need to add anything to it because I mean that 860,000 was a big chunk of the contingency and, and the, e the memorandum that I received I wasn't quite clear on it and I'd sent an email earlier but I didn't get a response back Okay, I, I answered the email. I don't know if it didn't go through, but what's confusing about this is typically we fund the entire contingency up front, and because of some cash flow, we only put a portion of the contingency in, and the first change order that they asked for, or the first 
access to contingents they asked for, took care of the balance that we put in there for FY18. So our next contribution to contingency would be as part of the capital improvement plan of the budget that you're gonna get this evening. And what they're doing is asking for us to fund that a, a couple of months in advance so that they can go ahead and utilize it for this particular order. And then, and Les Kelly said there'll be 200,000 left over for the entire contingency of the school project. Okay. So it's a little confusing. We normally put it all up front, but we had to strategically split it up over two different fiscal years and then they had some issues where they had to access most of it quickly. Uh, I understand, you know, and I, I was reading something also, um, Pam, about that we may have to push some issues down the road a little bit further in order to do this by the time they need this money? Some of the capital improvement. Well, for this portion of it, we, we were going to address this in FY19, so we we pushed it in advance to go ahead and fund it in May instead of June. adopting it as part of the June budget process. So that's the advancement of this. Okay, okay. okay that was my question. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay. Okay, any other questions? Okay, do I hear a motion regarding this matter? I make a motion to approve the 860,000 West Cabarrus High School contingency request through the use of the capital reserve funding and authorize the Cabarrus County Finance Director to prepare the appropriate budget amendment and project ordinances. Okay, do we have a second to that motion? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No, no discussion, but the same thing. I, I'm gonna say what I always say is, I, I, I guess I want everybody to know that you don't wanna come ask for it. We don't wanna fund it. There's nothing you can do. There's a reason you have contingency in a construction project. You don't wanna use it, but when you have to use it, you, you do. It's just do everything you can do from this point forward to keep the cost down and, 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 and manage the project, which I know you're doing. It just has to be repeated over and over and over. So that's all. I, th I think you make a good point. Sometimes uh, folks that are reading about this or watching it don't realize how very little control um, that either of us have over these issues. Okay, any more discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. I'll oppose no, that motion passes. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Okay, next item is regarding Carver Elementary School. We're glad to have Will Crabtree with us. I just, excuse me, Will, I just skipped over one. Um, next item is Mount Pleasant Middle School Sale Offer Review. And, and Kyle Billifer will talk with us about that. Uh, good evening, and I also like to call Harris Morrison from New Branch, our real estate consultant. And I also believe we have somebody here from um, the potential buyer, um, corporate funding. Tom Earnhardt. Tom Earnhardt. And I'm just going to give a brief recap, and then obviously you can ask either of these gentlemen any questions that you have. Um, he came in front of you at the work session to let you know that the upset bid process did run its course. It ended on uh, April 27th, and the bid stand, and that bid was from Mr. Earnhardt's um, group, which is Corporate Funding Associates II, LLC, and that was for $601,326. And again, this is the 20-acre parcel, the old Mount Pleasant Middle School, and it does not include the four acres across uh, the street that housed the three ball fields that the Youth Association uses. So I did read the supplemental information that Mr. Earnhardt submitted, so now is, is the board's time to ask any further questions uh, and to make the decision if they want to uphold this upset bid process and start the process of selling the property and involving our attorney in that. Okay, thank you. Do either of you gentlemen have anything you'd like to share bef before we ask questions? Well, yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman and fellow commissioners and staff. I, I appreciate the opportunity to come out and answer any questions that you may have regarding the sale of this property. Um, our master plan is consistent with the uh, 
Mount Pleasant Comprehensive Development Plan uh, that was recently adopted uh, December the 11th of 2017, um, of which I have a copy with me tonight. Um, and I'll read directly from that, um, that passage, uh, encourages the redevelopment or reuse of the former middle school site, preferably with a mixed use uh, to include recreation, uh, restaurants, retail, office, institutional, and residential uh, development. So we think that we are consistent with that plan. Uh, that's, uh, they, uh, they're all aligned, and we'd appreciate a favorable response. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners, do you have any questions of any of the three gentlemen before us? I don't have any questions. Just to comment, you know, I'm just glad that someone moved on this pretty quick because, you know, we've been dealing with the old Bethel School for years, and we surely didn't want to see the Mount Pleasant Middle School turn into another Bethel. Of course, it's a little bit more high, higher visibility for the Mount Pleasant, and um, Mr. Earnhardt, I think that what you and your company are wanting to do there will be most beneficial for the citizens of Mount Pleasant because they need some things down there that your company's willing to provide. And, um, you know, I'm just glad that you guys have the vision and the foresight to take an old building like that and turn it into something that's going to be profitable, not only for you, but for the citizens of Cabarrus, uh, of, um, Cabarrus County, particularly Mount Pleasant. Great. Any other questions or comments? Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I do have a question just about some verbiage of the contract. Um, the contract date is for the, is the date that it's executed, if I'm looking at it right, but the examination period and the closing date are actually hard dates and not, it doesn't say 30 days, 60 days after the contract date. So I just want to make sure we get all of that squared away before we approve it. That was a question I was going to ask because under the contract uh, document that we have, the actual examination period would end this Friday, or excuse me, this Thursday, and the closing would be this Friday. So my question would be, are we still looking at those to be the dates that this is going to close, or are you thinking about some other dates? And I understand you put these in not knowing, uh, you know, that this would necessarily be approved on this date or any other date. So. Yeah, those dates were put in so that they would demonstrate that we're prepared to go quickly with this sale. Um, we did not anticipate that it was going to take this long to get through the process. So um, we would like to do, we will do it timely, but we would like to um, do it within 30 to uh, 45 days from approval, assumably. Okay. Oh, Mr. Chairman, I, I, well, did you have a uh, comment on that? You just, just note that this goes into the whole upset bid process and how long we have to leave it up for and when we can come back in front of the board. So that kind of skews those dates, which is why they don't match when this finally happens and what causes the delay. Right. Well, I would certainly be fine of, of I mean, <clears throat> 45 days is, 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 is fast and reasonable, I think, on both parties. So I'm mean, 30s, not really, I'm not sure fair to them to do all that they probably need to do, but uh, so, if, if would we just include that in the in the motion yes i think that would be a good idea okay are you prepared to make such motion i was but i didn't want to shut off anybody else from making a comment that they wanted to comment well now i would just uh, second what commissioner she said i think it's exciting and glad that somebody's going to take that and do something that will be good for the town of mount pleasant as well as the county but to uh commissioner kiger's point so 45 days to close, and then are you going to back a few days up for the, due, the examination period, or how would that need to be worded? That's a clear, that clear yeah, that's, that's, that's fine, sure. His examination period it will be within that 45 days. The way that it was originally worded was that it would end a day before okay. the actual. That's um, what you're thinking. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Chairman, I would move that we approve the bid award and authorize the county manager to execute the purchase contract between Cabarrus County and Corporate Funding Associates LLC with a contract to represent a closing uh, within 45 days of the contract date, subject to revision by the county attorney. Okay. Do I hear a second to that motion? 
<clears throat> okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, ditto on what was said earlier. Just really, really happy to have a local concern that's that's interested in the community and is going to make some good things happen there. So, okay, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And um, I would, uh, this is unsolicited, but I would like to put a plug in for the Mount Pleasant Library as well. I, I know their needs and I'm very supportive, so. Great, I was gonna ask you if you had a room over there on that property. Work on that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> okay, now, after that false start, Will Crabtree from Kanapa City Schools, <coughs> welcome. Good evening, good evening. I'm here to talk to you about the Carver Elementary School uh, adding a security vestibule and moving the office from the middle of the school to the front of the school. Uh, we recently bid that project out with the base bid being uh, the vestibule and the area for the receptionist and the alternate being uh, the movement of the other offices such as school resource officers, uh, principal, assistant principal. Uh, the base bid came in at $118,000 and uh, we were, the original ask was to use uh, savings from the Carver project that was not earmarked for the office move, but to allow us to use those savings to do the base bid. And then the second ask would be uh, to potentially use, uh, I think it was $50,000 in uh, lottery proceeds and potentially another forty-nine dollars to $50,000 in either uh, FY19 capital funds for us or uh, possibly commissioner discretionary funds to try to get that uh, all completed this summer. Um, here again, I'll say those of you who visited that school know that this is a desperate need, especially in the world we live in today, uh, and looking at school safety. Uh, we would uh, be very much grateful to the commissioners if uh, you would see it to give us the funding to do this. Okay, questions for Mr. Crabtree. I do have one, this may be more for Pam. It, the way this currently reads, if we're using the, the partial little sliver of lottery funds, have we ever done that before? Has that always gone to debt service? So we use $2 million every year for lottery funds for debt service. And then Ms. Farrington will go through and assess after every so many years, because we do get a little bit more than $2 million. And when we get some excess funds, she provides those numbers and says that there's some certain projects that we could do and Kannapolis City Schools happened to have about 50,000 and Cabarrus County, I can't remember how much money they had and I think they're working through a project for themselves. But so we actually do use those excess funds to work on some <coughs> projects for them. So it's not a precedence? No, this will be okay. the second or third time we've done this. Okay, any other questions? One, one question that someone asked me is, I know you did put this out to bid. How many people bid on this project, do you recall? We had three people bid, three Bids. three companies, I'm sorry. Uh-huh, right, and this was the best this price This was the best price, the uh -huh. uh, both, it was the best uh, base bid price and it was the best base bid and alternate price. Right, okay. Well, it's a definite need, and I have visited that school and will attest to that. Okay, commissioners, what would be your pleasure on this item? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make the motion to approve the construction request for Carver Elementary with the use of the base bid savings, the lottery funds, and commissioner's contingency, and authorize the chairman to execute the lottery fund application, authorize the Cabarrus County Finance Director to prepare the appropriate budget amendment and project ordinances. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? <clears throat> Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Yes, sir. Okay, next item in new business is presentation of the proposed fiscal year 19 Cabarrus County budget and scheduling of a public hearing. And we will turn that over to manager Mike Downs. Well, this is the time of the year after about uh, six, six months of staff time and, and hard work and working with you throughout the process that we are ready to submit a recommended budget to you that is in, in front of each of you and uh, for everybody else, this is the 
this is the <laughs> proposed budget. So it's a really thick document, a lot of work gone into it, and a lot of a lot of good stuff there. But I wanted to read my message to you with a with a recommendation as well. Honorable Chair and members of the Cabarrus County Board of Commissioners, it is my honor to submit the recommended Cabarrus County General Fund general fund budget to you for fiscal year 2019. Staff has prepared this budget in accordance with the general statutes of North Carolina and the North Carolina Local Government Budget and Fiscal Control Act. Through responsible planning and budgeting, we've improved efficiencies, streamlined processes, leveraged partnerships, and limited program expansion. The, the FY19 budget balances the demands of mandated services, growth management, and the need for services that improve quality of life. This balance delivers an exceptional business and living environment that our residents and businesses have sought and expect of us. It is my recommendation that the Board of Commissioners consider the approval of an FY19 general operating budget for $254,971,311, which represents a 3.23% increase in spending from the FY18 adopted budget. Funding for the proposed FY19 budget requires an abnormal rate of 72 cents. This will require an increase of two cents on the current tax rate of 70 cents, which the county was able to maintain for the last fis six fiscal years. Projections indicate that, ad that our ad valorem tax revenues will increase by 9,580,912 dollars in FY19. This equates to a projected growth of 6.2% in ad valorem taxes. While the property tax revenues are expected to increase, sales tax revenues are projected to decrease by approximately 3.37% or 1,613,467 dollars. This is primarily due to the amount of sales tax, that occur, sales tax refunds that occur in a given year. The median assessed home value in Cabarrus County is about $160,000. For these homeowners, the proposed increase of two cents equates to an additional $32 a year. The value of the increase will allow us to take on additional debt service for the construction of the new elementary school, installation of 20 mobile units, replacement of two large HVAC units for Cabarrus County schools. Additional debt service will fund the construction of the Rowan Cabarrus College, Community College's Advanced Technology Center and secure property expansions for their South Campus. Number two, to continue to fund the increased cost in ongoing facility operations of both school districts as well as the community college. These costs include locally funded positions and their benefits, utilities, teacher supplements, charter schools, non-certified positions as well as other costs. The total increase for FY19 is $4,166,367. Bringing the total current expense funding for schools to $75,223,797. Included in the budget is the funding for 89 local teacher and principal positions to meet the need of our county's districts. The total cost of these positions is, is approximately $6,211,176. Overall funding for public schools exceeds $124 million, including debt service. Rowan Cabarrus Community College's increased operational costs consist of the impact of the cosmetology program, location move, additional security officers for their campuses, energy and commodity inflation, and the addition of a facility technician for the Community Business and Technology Center and the Advanced Technology Center totaling $325,000. Number three, to increase our support for classroom services by raising the local teacher supplement to 8% of the annual teacher salaries in Cabarrus County Schools. Kannapolis City School District currently provides a flat supplement to teachers. The district plans to convert to a percentage of salary following the method used by Cabarrus County Schools. <coughs> Increased funding is being provided to aid the district to begin to meet the new supplement goal of 8% of teacher salaries for Kannapolis as well. Number four, staff and, staff and administer programming three days a week 
at the new library branch in Midland, a shared investment with the town, which will provide the facility. Attract and retain a talented and diverse workforce. Several departments have requested new positions to meet the additional demands. As caseload volumes continue to rise along the case complexity and increased morale issues, Human Services is requesting an, ad an additional 12 positions. Infrastructure and Asset Management has requested a custodian and a building maintenance mechanic due to the increase in expanding building and service needs. EMS has requested 10 part-time emergency medical technicians to assist with workload and to cover shifts when needed, as well as two master, paramedic program, two master paramedics to continue to expand the services of community paramedic program. The Construction Standards Division of the Planning and Development Department needs two additional code enforcement officers to help with the increased growth around the county and to maintain inspection levels. The Sheriff's Department has requested two additional detectives and one digital evidence technician to assist with increased caseloads in their department. The Finance Department has requested two positions to assist financial accounting and reporting and to support transparency efforts. Our Information and Technology Services Department has requested two support positions that will assist in the growing, with the growing employee base and our expanding digital services. Other positions include a tax auditor to assist with the reevaluation and economic development incentive processes, a recycling technician, and a construction manager, all of which are to address increased workload demands in their <coughs> respective departments. Lastly, our library system needs one part-time library assistant at the Harrisburg branch to assist with increased activities and one full-time and two part-time positions to staff the new Midland branch, which is planned to begin operation in late 2018. Continue to raise awareness of local problems that stem from mental health issues, including substance and opioid abuse, and the services required to address them. Government and nonprofit agencies and the general public meet on a regular basis to discuss the following concerns and the potential fiscal and practical demands on services and the general health of Cabarrus County citizens. As a result, the new Stepping Up program is in place in our detention facility with a full-time case manager to assess and provide assistance to those coming into the facility and also help them identify and access services when they leave. Our community paramedic program has been a huge <coughs> success and as such, we are proposing two additional paramedics to allow us to address mental health needs in our community as well. To keep up with the continued demands of a strong workforce in a strengthening economy, this has become more apparent in several high need, area, high need areas, such as human services, public safety, construction standards, and facilities maintenance. We continue to strive to offer our current and prospective employees market competitive compensation packages. This budget includes funding to implement the recommendations of the public safety salary study for our sheriff, emergency management, and emergency medical service departments. That was completed and approved earlier in FY18. This will help us with recruiting and retaining qualified employees so that we continue to offer exceptional service to the public. The FY19 budget process began in October of 2017. Staff strategically analyzed current, scheduled, current and scheduled programs, services, and capital improvements. Although we continue to find innovative ways to do more with less, our population is now 206,872. If we do not provide service levels on pace with growth, it will lead to the detrimental impacts on the effectiveness of county government and in turn, the stability of our community. We made difficult decisions to delay or eliminate many expansion requests from county departments and local agencies in favor of dedicating more funds to schools. Even so, we are not able to address the full scope of school capital needs, which are estimated to exceed $248,520,000 in the next three years for just Cabarrus County Schools. We continue to work with our state legislators to keep current revenue sources intact and explore new funding sources to aid with school capital projects. This, uh, this budget upholds the vision of the board. It's an investment in program and services that work in our community and, it's responsibly, and responsibly addresses our current vulnerabilities. It also continues our precedence of sound budgeting 
for which the county has received recognition for the 20 consecutive years. In closing, I would like to thank the Board of Commissioners for their leadership throughout our county, region, and state. Cabarrus County is recognized as a leader in many ways. It is because of your willingness to lead and your support of our employees that Cabarrus County can use creativity and innovation to provide the very best public service. I also want to commend all of the county employees for another great year in which they worked hard to support the goals and objectives of the commissioners and, provide the, and to provide support to the citizens of Cabarrus County. I want to specifically thank Budget Manager Kristen Jones, Budget Analyst Lauren Tayara, Senior Deputy County Manager Pam Dubois, Finance Director Susan Farrington, Deputy County Manager Jonathan Marshall, Area Manager of Operations Kyle Billiford, and Human Services Director Karen Calhoun, and Human Resources Director Lundy Covington. They have all worked extra hard on this year's budget. Respectfully submitted. Michael K. Downs, County Management. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I think this is the sixth budget process that I have been involved in, and I think this year has been one of the toughest, but I also think it's been one of the smoothest and well-managed uh, processes we've gone through. <clears throat> and, of course, it's not over yet. Um, which brings us to the uh, next item, and just a couple facts to add. Uh, a copy of the proposed budget will be filed in the office of the clerk to the board uh, and will be available for public inspection, inspection at the governmental center during regular business hours. Uh, the budget will also be posted on the county website uh, that anyone can go and look at. Uh, we will be having budget workshop meetings uh, later this week. The first one on May 22nd, which is tomorrow uh, night at, or tomorrow afternoon, I think at 4 o'clock is the correct time. Uh, and then again on Thursday, May 24th, also at 4 o'clock. Um, we will also uh, have a public hearing uh, on the proposed budget. And our next regular meeting, which will be on June the 18th, uh, where we will be available to hear from anybody that would like to, uh, to comment on the budget during that public hearing. So at this time, I would entertain a motion uh, to schedule a public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 19 Cabarrus County budget for Monday, June 18th, 2018 at 6.30 p.m., or as soon thereafter as persons may be heard. Okay, we have, have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. Um, just, just one comment of, I thought of interest. I was at a meeting of Central Line Council of Government on uh, April 12th and listened to one of the speakers and I was surprised to hear that 33 counties in the state of North Carolina had net population decline, uh, which is pretty incredible when you hear the, the population growth uh, that we are experiencing here in Cabarrus County. So with that growth comes some challenges, but not nearly as difficult as the challenges for those people that are losing population. So. We have a lot to be thankful for. Any other comments or questions regarding the budget message? Okay, hearing none, we will move to appointments to boards and committees. And first up is uh, appointments to the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority. Um, Emily Zimmerman has moved out of state and has resigned from her seat on the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority. The Cabarrus County Tourism Authority Board of Directors has met and is nominating Steve Steinbacher to fill the unexpired term commencing May 21st, 2018 and expiring on June 30th, 2020. Uh, a letter in that regard has been included in your agenda. 
So at this time, I would entertain a motion to remove Emily Zimmerman from the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority roster and thank her for her service. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And at this time, I would entertain a motion to appoint Steve Steinbacher, seat number 10, to the Cabarrus County Tourism Authority to complete an unexpired term ending June 30th, 2020. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we now move to appointments to the Water and Sewer Authority of Cabarrus County. Commissioner Liz Poole and Jonathan Marshall, Deputy County Manager, both serve on the Water and Sewer Authority of Cabarrus County and have terms expiring June 30th, 2018. Both are willing to serve another term. Mr. Marshall resides in Mecklenburg County. An exception to the residency provision of the appointment policy will be needed for him. So at this time, I would entertain a motion to reappoint Liz Poole and Jonathan Marshall to the Water and Sewer Authority for three-year terms ending June 30th, 2021 including an exception to the residency provision of the appointment policy for Jonathan Marshall. I mean, second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, no. That motion passes. And we move now to reports. At this time, we will receive updates from commission members who serve as liaisons to municipalities or on various boards and committees. Does anyone have anything they would like to report tonight? No. Okay. Um, as, as we frequently mention, we do have a number of vacancies on various county boards and committees. Uh, those are posted on our website and we would encourage um, folks to take a look there and to file application with our clerk. Um, next, any general comments by board members? Do we have need of a closed session? I wanted to just mention a little bit about the Central Line of Council of Government. Uh, we attended that seminar last week, Steve and I, and uh, you're talking about futuristic and um, things that they say is going to happen, you know, not only in our region but countrywide. And it sort of got me to thinking because if you think about maybe 150 years ago, obviously none of us was here, but the main mode of transportation back then was stagecoach and horses and buggies and wagons and stuff like that. You don't never see that stuff no more except unless you go to a, maybe a zoo or you go somewhere where they have that as part of your entertainment, like riding downtown Concord or something, take a buggy ride. Well, can you imagine, just think for a minute, maybe a hundred years from now, a carless society? People not having cars to get around. You go get on the blue line and you zip from here to there. And, and uh, it's amazing, you know, they're working on the autonomous, autonomous, which is driverless cars and between the uh, Department of Transportations and all the technology companies, they are working to make that a reality, which is really a stepping stone to a carless society someday. So I thought it was interesting. I wanted to share it not only with you, but the people that watch this on TV because it was a very good meeting, uh, all day meeting, but uh, full of a lot of information, a lot to absorb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. And that was a transportation summit uh, that we were attending. We heard from people across the country. Uh, one particular, um, I think our luncheon speaker was from Denver, Colorado, uh, talking about the uh, public transportation system they had there. I have a young friend that's recently moved to Colorado, so I sent a text message and said, are you familiar with this system and do you ever use it? And the reply back was, yes, I use it 
all the time and we can go all the way to the airport. And then uh, another interesting aspect, uh, he mentioned that the, many of the school children use it for their transportation to schools and that they have many fewer yellow school buses than we do in this area because they use that rapid transit system to get back and forth to school. So we've got a little ways to go, but who knows, we might get there. Okay, any other uh, general comments? We do not have need of a closed session tonight, so at this time, I would, do we want to adjourn or do we want to recess to tomorrow's meeting? We were planning to adjourn unless adjourn. we needed to do so. With, okay. Um, What are you recommending for them? If it's not going to make a difference, we'll just go ahead and adjourn. And it takes things out of sequence That's right. okay. to, so we'll to do that, okay. I think. In that case, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I move. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, no. We stand adjourned. Thank you.